Oh, for fuck's sake. Back when the original trailer for Black Widow dropped, I confidently predicted that it would be a solid, well-crafted, but ultimately pointless movie in a similar vein to Winter Soldier. Well, I was half right. It definitely borrows a lot of ideas from Winter Soldier. Arguably a few too many, but we'll get into that one later. But as for being solid and well-crafted... Uh... On the surface, Black Widow follows the classic MCU formula to the letter. There's an impressive cast, tightly choreographed fight scenes, chases, explosions, and a big epic CGI finale. The thing is though, strip away the big flashy production values, and you're left with an awkward, clumsy, amateurish kind of movie, trying too hard to be funny, trying too hard to be serious, and trying too hard to push ideas that feel played out and unimaginative. A film that handicaps its talented cast with crappy material and squanders the opportunity to give one of the MCU's most beloved characters the triumphant send-off that she deserves. In short, it's a bit of a fucking stinker. Allow me to illuminate you. The movie begins with a flashback to 1995, where a young Natasha and her family are living the American dream, until they get summoned back to Russia by their handlers. You can tell they really wanted this sequence to happen during the Cold War, but they couldn't get the dates to line up with the character's age, so instead were lumbered with this weird mid-90s setting. Anyway, cue a frantic chase sequence where they have to escape the FBI in a light aircraft, because I guess the US government just kind of gives up on foreign agents the moment they get airborne. Not a great plan. Anyway, after making their way to Cuba, the family gets split up and Nat and her sister get inducted into the Black Widow program. To be fair, it's a pretty promising opening. It's grim and gritty and it demonstrates the harsh reality of becoming a Black Widow. It also gives us a glimpse of the film's antagonist, Drakov. Fucking cherish this one though because you won't be seeing him again until like the last 15 minutes. Anyway, flash forward to the present day and Nat's sister Yelena is still a Black Widow, tasked with hunting down another Black Widow that's gone rogue. She manages to take down her target but not before getting dosed with some glowing red jizz that causes her to break her mental conditioning and mutiny. Meanwhile, Nat herself is also on the run after the events of Civil War and eventually winds up in Norway, where her arms dealer contract has set her up with a safe house. Wait, why does someone like Nat need a fixer? Isn't she exactly the kind of person that would have safe houses all over the world just in case? Nah, whatever. But he also delivers a package from her safe house in Budapest. Well, this guy is like the nicest and most considerate arms dealer I've ever seen. Which she totally ignores, because why not, right? It's not like it's going to contain important information or a magical bullshit MacGuffin that's vital to the rest of the plot. Anyway, Nat's headed into town later that night when her car suddenly gets run off the road by a dude in a skull mask. But he's not actually after Nat, he wants the package from Budapest, because wouldn't you know it, it contains the glowing red jizz that freed Yelena. Wait, how the fuck did Skeletor know where Nat was? Why did he wait until now to attack her? How was he able to track and recover the package when he didn't even know what he was looking for? Why does he repeatedly spare her life when she clearly represents a threat to the success of his mission? How is he able to travel the world dressed like fucking Boba Fett without attracting attention? Don't know. Anyway, they have a fight and Nat escapes with the canisters of red jizz because she was somehow able to remove it from its protective casing, hide it inside her jacket, and close the case again without Skeletor noticing in the half second it took for him to throw her off a bridge. Uh, yeah, sure, okay. Naturally, she wants answers, so she heads to her old safe house in Budapest, and who should be waiting there but Yelena? <laughs> Then they have a fight, and for the life of me, I cannot work out why. Yelena clearly wanted Nat to come here because she sent the package to her, and Nat clearly wants answers from Yelena, so why the fuck are they trying to kill each other? In fact, how the fuck does Yelena even know about this safe house? If she didn't want Nat to come here, why couldn't she have included a note with the red jizz explaining her situation? Shite. Oh yes, that's shite. Anyway, after about 20 minutes of fucking around, we finally get some answers. It turns out that when Nat defected from the Black Widows, she assassinated Drakov by blowing up his building, including his young daughter. Hmm, I wonder if that'll be relevant later. Anyway, Drakov survived the attack. How? Don't know. But to make sure no other Widows turned against him, he started using some weird mind control on them, and the Red Jizz is the only thing that can break it. Where exactly did the Red Jizz come from and who developed it? Don't know. How did the Widow at the start get her hands on it? Don't know. The point is, they need to find Drakov, kill him, and use the Red Jizz to free the other Black Widows. The problem is, they don't know where to find him. The only guy who does know is the Red Guardian, who's now locked up in a Siberian prison. Why? Don't know. 
Now, prison breaks are usually pretty cool in movies like this. A chance for the writers to exercise a bit of creative thinking and pull off some exciting set pieces. I can only assume the writers of Black Widow take a different view though because this whole sequence is basically a series of increasingly ridiculous fuck-ups from characters who should absolutely know better. Their grand plan is for him to fight his way into the prison yard through dozens of guards and fellow inmates, then climb to the upper levels under heavy gunfire so they can pick him up by chopper, and for some reason they're surprised when he's not able to accomplish this. Not a great plan. What the fuck did you expect? Don't you think you're asking kind of a lot from a single unarmed man? Naturally he fucks up and Nat goes in to rescue him just before an avalanche engulfs the whole facility, killing dozens of innocent men, but I guess we'll just ignore that. Unfortunately, Red Guardian doesn't know where Drakov is hiding either, but he knows who does. It turns out that Molina, their fake mum from the start of the movie, has been working for Drakov for years to develop his mind control system. Wow, lucky that the two parental figures in their lives are both intimately connected with the man they need to kill now. So they find Molina and after an excruciating family bonding scene where the movie tries really hard to be funny, she decides it's time to get the plot moving again and betrays them to Drakov, then Skeletor captures them and takes them to his floating sky fortress. Yup, that's the thing which is in this movie. Things are looking grim for the groovy gang, but it Turns out it was all a double cross so that Nat could get close to Drakov and kill him. The problem is that he gives off some kind of pheromone which prevents Nat from harming him. <laughs> That's right, this guy literally uses the power of smell to protect himself. So Nat does the sensible thing and headbutts the table to break her own nose so she can't smell him anymore. And honestly, it's probably the single funniest moment in the whole movie. I, uh, I think I can smell shite. I mean, couldn't you have just walked to the other side of the room or something? His pheromones can't extend that far. So anyway, everyone has a good punch up and the castle in the sky blows up and Skeletor gets unmasked as Drakov's daughter. No way! Oh my goodness, who could possibly have predicted that the character whose identity is hidden throughout the whole movie could possibly be the girl whose death has been a source of guilt for Nat this whole time? Anyway, Drakov gets blown up in the most underwhelming death scene ever, the Black Widows get freed by the Red Jizz and everyone just kind of leaves like they can't think of anything else to do. And that's it, that's the plot for Black Widow. <laughs> I said earlier that this movie kind of reminds me of Winter Soldier and it's not hard to see why. Both films feature a war against a clandestine organisation manipulating events from the shadows, both put their protagonist up against someone they share a close personal history with, both have a masked enforcer who's been brainwashed into killing without question, and both culminate in a battle scene aboard a flying fortress of some kind. If I was a cynical man, I'd say the writers were unimaginative hacks who tried to copy the formula of a much more successful film because they couldn't come up with any real idea of their own. The difference though is in the execution. Winter Soldier worked so well because it built on the history of its main character. When Steve went up against Bucky, you understood his conflict because you knew how close the two men had once been. When they try to do the same thing with Skeletor, it feels meaningless because Nat has no actual history with her. It's the same problem with Yelena, who's never been mentioned or referenced in any previous movie, making it pretty obvious she was retconned in here. Drakov himself is one of the most underwhelming antagonists in Marvel history, and and that's fucking saying something, believe me. He's barely in the movie, and when he does finally show up, he's just a weak, pathetic, egotistical old man, easily manipulated into compromising his life's work. I mean, there's a strong subtext of abusive relationships in this movie, and the clear message is that most abusers are generally weak and cowardly once you strip away the veneer of intimidation, but it doesn't exactly make for a thrilling climax. I wanted someone who could actually test Black Widow, but Drakov feels almost superfluous in his own story. Speaking of superfluous characters, if you were excited to see Red Guardian in this film, prepare to have your hopes shat on. The guy literally only exists to lead the girls to someone who can actually help them and to say really dumb things so that we can all laugh at him for being fat and stupid. Isn't it funny how the only two male characters in this film are either portrayed as weak and pathetic or dumb and comical? Just something to think about. Also, I have to admit I'm really confused about Melina, who I assume we're supposed to root for because she ultimately betrays Drakov. But that doesn't change the fact that she's been complicit in his work for decades, even developing the brainwashing used to control the other widows. She tortures animals on her farm, she sanctions the kidnapping of young children, and her work helps to keep them enslaved as adults. And at no point does she ever answer for these crimes or even really acknowledge them. It's all just conveniently forgotten about. Kind of like WandaVision now that I think about it. They'll never know what you sacrificed for them. <laughs> I wonder if there could be a connection there. 
The emotional tone of this film is all over the place, swinging wildly between dark, serious drama and ridiculous slapstick comedy with absolutely no warning or common sense. One minute we're supposed to be laughing at Red Guardian trying to squeeze into his old suit, the next we're dealing with child kidnappings, murders and torture. Even the patented Marvel humour is kind of lacking now. Gangs that should be quick and punchy come across as slow and laboured, like the script's trying too hard to milk its unfunny jokes for all they're worth. Jesus, at least Winter Soldier maintained a consistent tone. Yeah, there was the occasional Joker one-liner, but generally it was a film you were supposed to take seriously. I don't know what the hell I'm supposed to do with Black Widow, because I don't know what the fuck it's trying to be. The frustrating thing here is that they had such a great cast to work with. Scarlett Johansson's a seasoned pro that's been doing this shit for decades now, and she knows exactly what she's about. This version of Black Widow is older and more battle-weary, but she's still a determined fighter. And I have to admit, the scene where she provokes Drakov into repeatedly punching her and refuses to stay down is pretty fucking good. But the standout for me was Florence Pugh as Yelena. She's funny and engaging, she shows moments of vulnerability without ever seeming weak, and she sparks pretty well off Johansson. The few jokes that actually land mostly come from her matter-of-fact delivery. To understand how this film went wrong, I decided to find out a bit more about the people behind it. Like director Kate Shortland, who I looked up online and found fuck all. In the past 20 years, she's directed a grand total of three obscure low-budget movies that I've never heard of. Why the fuck is someone like this directing a $200 million action flick? Not a great plan. But what about the writing team, you may ask? Well, Jacqueline Schaefer did WandaVision, which kind of explains the very shaky morality here, and she's got an uncredited rewrite for Captain Marvel. Uh... Meanwhile, Eric Pearson co-wrote Thor Ragnarok with the help of two other people, and... That's it. Are you serious? So basically this film was made by writers and directors with no meaningful accomplishments to their names. Jesus, imagine what this movie could have been if they'd hired the Rousseau brothers. Now believe it or not, it gives me no pleasure to slate this film because I genuinely wanted it to do well. I wanted Black Widow to finally get the recognition she deserves, and I wanted the MCU to say goodbye to her in a way that was poignant and appropriate, instead of dropping her off a fucking cliff. But what we got instead was a shitty, clumsy, low effort action flick that could have been released any time in the past 10 years. A movie with neither a heart nor a brain, written and directed by people who had no business being in charge of a production like this, that just kind of shambles towards its conclusion with absolutely no sense of urgency or occasion, and ultimately wastes the amazing opportunity it's been given. It's just a shame that after so many years of waiting for a Black Widow movie, what we ended up with kind of makes me wish they hadn't bothered. Anyway, that's all I've got for today. Go away now.